Are you finding that uh, you keep getting these same comments all the time from uh, your plan reviewers? Are you finding that red lines are constantly coming in, but they're always the same, same type of red lines that you wish you had caught the first time? Are you finding that you never have enough time? Time seems like always be an issue to you. I'm always pressured to do more and more work. And I, I can't get it all done. Are you finding that uh, your team seems to be not doing much of anything? Uh, they just do some drawings and they look like they sit around waiting for you to give them something else to do, but you're so busy all the time. And watch this video because we're going to cover the three mistakes that most project engineers make all the time. As project engineers, we, we always like to uh, do our designs. We're sure how to do the design. Uh, we've done these type of designs many times before, and so we have a lot of experience doing it, and we know how to solve the problem. And because of that, uh, we generally feel better that we need to handle it, get it taken care of, and we know it can get done quickly, and we can move on. Problem is, is as you get all these different projects, well, you can't do it all. Even though you know how to design and solve each and every technical problem, you just not enough time to do it all. So the three mistakes that project engineers make is first that they fail to make checklists. Checklists are an important item in any design review. In fact, most of the government entities have checklists that they use to review our plans with, which is a clue for us on what we need to do for our plans as project engineers and design firms. That is, get a hold of these checklists, and that becomes the basis of your checklist within your own firm. Use the checklist in order to check your plans before they ever leave your office and go out for a review. Make sure that all the items on the checklist have been completed. Checklists are extremely important because when you're doing a lot of technical design, you get bogged down in those details, and you kind of forget the simple things. Maybe like putting a north arrow on your plans or putting the proper scale, making sure the scale of your plans match the scale in the descriptions, making sure that you have the correct uh, client information on, the, on your plans, his address and his phone number, making sure you have the proper assessor parcel numbers on your plans, or even if you're doing other type of work, architectural plans, uh, the structural designs, Going through the checklist makes sure that you catch each and every one of these small uh, items that sometimes they get overlooked. Now, just because you have the checklist from the government entity doesn't necessarily mean that's the end all. You may have within your own company items that you need to check all the time, making sure that your company logo is on your plans. Maybe it's not a requirement from the government entity, but for you and your own branding of your company is very important to have your company logo on your plans. It could be a number of other things such as uh, font styles, line styles, uh, line types that you're using on your uh, CAD drawings. All these are important internally within your company, but it's not necessarily important to the reviewing agency that's looking at your plans. Make sure you have checklists, number one, and if you do that, it's going to reduce the amount of time and review of your plans. When a government entity gets it, they go through the checklist, everything's done the way they like it. They have a few minor comments maybe, or more than likely they will approve your plans. If you don't use a checklist and they go through and get a whole bunch of red lines, that costs you time to correct those plans when it comes back to you. So it's gonna save you a lot of time in the future. Use checklists. The second thing that, uh, as project engineers that we don't necessarily do very well, and that is to delegate a lot of our responsibility over to other members of our team, such as uh, doing a technical analysis. Someone else in the team could probably learn how to do that. You don't have to do all of the technical analysis or all the technical designs. Use other people on the team to do that for you. This allows them to grow, allows them to move a little bit out of their comfort zone and also have a chance for them to see if they can excel um, at probably a little bit higher level. So by delegating some of your tasks to the uh, other individuals in your team, this frees up your time to do other things. You want to delegate as much as you can, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you check the work that they do. Once they have finished the work and they believe it's correct and they give it back to you, then you can review it, make sure everything looks right, and we check the calcs, 
which should not take very much time at all. And then you can say, yep, that's good. This is the way I like it and move forward. If you don't like the way something's done or you think they missed some uh, area of analysis, you can then say, okay, I need you to look at this number or look at uh, this standard or this requirement and see if that also meets uh, the, the design. If it doesn't, then they know they need to adjust their calculations. All this is for learning. And once you get them to know how to do those calculations, then you can get them to learn other different types of design, technical design type items. All of which will free up your time in the future, giving you that additional time that you need to do uh, your work as a project engineer. The third item that most engineers, project engineers, seem to not do very well is allocating sufficient time to do each task that they have. Uh, quite often we think we're pretty good at what we do and we believe we can do it pretty quickly, but we don't necessarily understand in the real world, we get interrupted by individuals, uh, things are happening around us at all times, and so what we think may take one hour to finish may actually take two hours to complete. This is very important that we understand how much time it takes to do something. So it, this is why it's important to keep kind of records of all the items that you do from day to day tasks to make sure you get a better understanding of how long it takes to do something. So in order to write a uh, spreadsheet to do a uh, water analysis, well, it, you may look at it and say, well, that takes about an hour. And if you have record of doing water analysis in the past, then you can look back and say, yep, it's about an hour. Or maybe it's about an hour and a half or two hours. So then you can adjust your time frame for that. Then put that into your schedule, saying it takes about an hour and a half to do this water analysis, this particular type of water analysis. And then you give enough time to complete it. Then you know if you have eight hours of work that day, maybe you have 10 hours of work that day. Or maybe you have only six hours of work, so you might be able to squeeze some other things in. You might also take into account that when you have to go to meetings, you have to get up and leave your desk to go get to that meeting. Or if you're doing a virtual meeting, you may not have to leave your desk, but you have to prepare for that meeting, which is why it's important to know that meetings will be held for one hour and no more, or 30 minutes and no more, or whatever the length of time of that meeting is. When you come out of the meeting and go back to your work area, whether it's in person or virtually, you have to allow for that time too. So if it's a one hour meeting, it may actually take two hours from the time you get away from your desk, go to the meeting, attend the meeting, leave the meeting, come back to your office, again, get back into the work to understand where you're at in your schedule. That's enough time that has been allocated for that specific meeting. If you're putting meetings and no time between the meeting and your next task, uh, you already didn't allow sufficient time. So always make sure you allocate the appropriate amount of time. So those are the three items that we have found that most project engineers seem to have failed at doing. One is to not to use checklists when they're reviewing plans and their own plans and anybody else's plans for that matter. Uh, two, not delegating their work off to other members of the team that they have with them. And three, not to allocate sufficient time to complete their task. If you do all three of those items correctly, then you'll have more than sufficient time to complete your task within your eight to 10 hour day as a project engineer in an engineering design firm. You gotten value out of this video, so please make sure you go ahead down below and subscribe to our channel. Also hit that like button to let us know that we're doing a good job. Uh, this keep, tells us to keep on making videos like this and others. And also make sure you hit that bell when you do that, it'll get, you'll get notified next time we upload a video. So please go down below and subscribe to our channel. Also, you notice over here to the side is the next video that's coming up that we recommend to watch uh, in our series of videos on project engineering, on project management. So until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.